Hello and welcome to another edition of Lacrosse Technologies Tech Talk. I'm your host, Greg Piesel, and today we will be setting up and showing you how to use your new wireless weather station with Bluetooth speaker. So, let's go! Now, just to point out, this video has been organized in the chapter points, designed to help you find what you need to know quickly. So, if you're looking to set up something specific, use the clickable links in the following overview screen to jump directly to that spot in this video. You can also find the times to each chapter in the description below this video. Using this method, simply click the blue highlighted time to the right. Otherwise, just sit back and learn as we take you through each step of the setup process. So here is an overview of how this video is organized. Chapter 1, Introduction, which is actually what you are currently watching. Chapter 2, Parts and Accessories. We will tell you what's in the box, what batteries you'll need, and what tools you should have handy. Chapter 3, Initial Setup. Here you will learn where each battery should be installed, as well as how and where to set up your outdoor temperature and humidity sensor. Chapter 4, LCD Layout and Icon Descriptions. In this chapter, we will show you around your weather station screen, detailing what each icon means in relation to each other. Chapter 5, Bluetooth 2.1 Operation. Learn how to set up and use the Bluetooth feature with your mobile device. We will also cover how to use the audio input jack if your device does not allow you to connect wirelessly. Chapter 6, Settings. This section is important if you'd like to customize your date and time settings as well as your temperature readings. Chapter 7, Setting the Time Alarms. Here you will learn how to set alarms, choose their type and sound, snooze them, and how to turn them off. Chapter 8, The Colored LED Rim. The light surrounding the base of your weather station can be programmed to change based on the weather, custom colors, and a color loop. This chapter will show you how to do just that. Chapter 9, Forecast Information. This chapter covers the meaning of your forecast icons, tendency indicators, as well as how to view and reset your high and low temperature and humidity values. Chapter 10, USB Charging Port and Backlight Adjustment. Self-explanatory, but we will show you how each of these features work. Chapter 11, Extras. This chapter includes learning how to both restart your outdoor sensor and search for its signal strength. You will learn how to perform a search for the WWVB atomic time signal, where to find the model numbers for the station itself, outdoor sensor, and even the AC adapter. It also includes some helpful tips to follow during routine maintenance. And finally, Chapter 12, Help Us Help You. This is the final chapter where we tell you how to find customized support and how to interact with us on social media. All right, so let's get started. Within your box, you should find one weather station with Bluetooth speaker, one outdoor temperature and humidity sensor, and one AC adapter. And here are some additional items you may need for proper use of this product. Three AAA batteries for the weather station itself, two AA batteries for the outdoor sensor, one mounting screw or nail to mount the outdoor sensor, one power drill or screwdriver for mounting purposes, and a north facing wall or well shaded area to mount your outdoor sensor. To ensure proper function of this device, we recommend following us through these five simple steps. Step 1. Insert the included 5 volt AC adapter into the wall outlet and then into the back of your weather station. Step 2 is actually optional. However, we do recommend inserting three new AAA alkaline batteries, according to polarity, into the bottom of the station. 
This will help maintain the time and weather information during power loss. Step 3. Insert two new AA batteries according to polarity into the outdoor sensor. The red light should flash during transmission. Step 4. Wait at least 5 minutes for the station and sensor to sync properly. If the outdoor temperature and humidity information is still not displayed, even after 3 minutes, press and release the TX slash RCC button on the back of the station to have it search for the sensor again. And on the sensor, press and release the TX button above the batteries to force a transmission signal. Providing you use new brand name batteries, inserted them according to polarity, and have the units set close to each other, the outdoor information should be showing up. And finally, step 5. Installing your outdoor temperature and humidity sensor should be an easy process. Depending on the unit you have, your sensor may look slightly different, but the installation should be the same or very similar. To mount the sensor, insert one mounting screw, nail, or even string through the hole at the top. You will want to try and place it on a north-facing wall or in any well-shaded area. Make sure also that it is mounted vertically to allow for moisture to drain out properly. The maximum wireless transmission range from this sensor to your station is around 300 feet of open air. This does not account for walls, floors, or windows. This chapter is designed to familiarize yourself with how the station is set up and to give you an idea of what it's capable of before you even push any buttons. Icon 1 here is the day of the week. Once you have worked your way through the settings menu and set your year, month, and date correctly, the day of the week should change automatically. Icon 2 represents the indoor temperature and humidity, which is calculated based on the location of this station itself. Icon 3, when activated, includes all of the Alarm 1 information. It will tell you which days of the week it is set to go off on, as well as if it's set to beep or play different sounds. Icon 4 is the rim light indicator. If it is set to change based on the forecast, it will show up here like this. But if it is set manually to one specific color or to cycle through all the colors, it will show up here on screen. Icon 5 are the forecast icons, which we will get into later on in Chapter 9. Icon 6 represents the outdoor sensor signal strength. The more bars, the better the reception. Icon 7 shows you the data coming from your outdoor temperature and humidity sensor. Now, this is based on where you have your remote sensor located. Icon 8 shows us the calendar, more specifically the month and the date. We will show you how to program this in the settings chapter. Icon 9 represents the animated color circle which surrounds the time in the middle of the screen. Every 5 seconds, one of the 12 sections will light up until all sections are lit up after 60 seconds. This is not a programmable feature. Icon 10 is the atomic time symbol and will show up when the signal is received. Icon 11, when activated, represents the Alarm 2 icon, which has all of the same features as Alarm 1. Icon 12 stands for the forecast tendency which will be covered in the forecast information chapter. And last but not least, icon 13 is an icon that will only appear when either your station or outdoor sensor is low on battery power. If the icon is displayed here in the indoor section, replace the batteries in the weather station itself. If the icon is displayed here in the outdoor section, replace the batteries in your outdoor sensor. <laughs> The Bluetooth feature is a great way to liven up a party without having to be away from your phone. The good news also is it's pretty easy to set up. First, press and hold the Bluetooth power button on the front of the station for a few seconds to start the syncing process. You should notice the BT light flashing red and blue when syncing. When activating Bluetooth on your mobile device, look for the name BT001 and select it. When connected, the BT light on the front of the station will stay solid blue. After this, you should be able to play your music from your mobile device through the speaker on the weather station. To adjust the volume, use the plus and minus buttons on the front of the station and or your volume controls on your mobile device. 
the play pause button on the front of the station does just that. It plays and pauses your music. To disconnect from Bluetooth, either press and release the Bluetooth power button on the front, or press and hold the play pause button for three seconds. Now, for the many out there who will come across these issues, here are the answers. One, if a phone call is made or received, the Bluetooth connection will temporarily be interrupted, but should automatically reconnect after the call. Two, if the weather station is unplugged briefly and then plugged back in again, the station will lose Bluetooth connectivity altogether. So, yes, that means this station has to be plugged in using the provided AC adapter in order for the Bluetooth feature to work. And three, depending on the app you're using to play music, the connection clarity may vary. So, this leads us to the question of, what if my device doesn't use Bluetooth? Well, for this we put an audio input jack right on the back. To play music using this method, you will just need to find yourself a 3.5mm audio input cable. Insert one end of the cable into your device, and the other into the back of the weather station. Then, press and hold the power button until you see a purple light flash once. If you then start up the music on your device, it should now be playing through the weather station speaker. From here, you can once again use the plus and minus buttons on the station, or your mobile device to adjust the volume. Now let's take you through the settings menu which houses some very important features that keep your station up to date and working the way you like. To enter the set mode, press and hold the settings button on the back of the unit for three seconds. This is the middle button, which also features a small bump designed to help you easily locate it when looking at the front of your screen. Once in the set mode, you will use the plus and minus buttons on the front to adjust the values, and the settings button again to confirm your adjustments and move to the next item in the settings menu. I should also point out that if you would like to exit the settings menu at any time, simply press and release the snooze slash backlight button on the top of the unit. This will bring you back to the main screen. So here's the order in which the settings menu will follow. First will be the ability to turn on or off the beep function. The default is on, meaning you will hear a beep for every button push. To change this to off, you will need to press and release either the plus or minus button. To confirm this selection, press and release the settings button. This brings us to the second option, which allows us to choose if we'd like to use the atomic time feature, and can be set to on or off. However, if set to off, the settings menu will then skip over items 3, your time zone setting, and 4, the daylight savings time option, and go straight to item 5, which is your hour setting but I plan to use the atomic time signal here, so I will leave it on the default setting, which is on, by once again pressing and releasing the settings button to confirm my selection. The next setting then will allow us to choose which time zone we are in. These will be abbreviated in the top left hand corner. Using the plus and minus buttons to cycle through, AST stands for the Atlantic time zone, EST Eastern time, CST Central time, MST Mountain Time, PST Pacific Time, AKT Alaska Time, and HAT for Hawaiian Time. We are located in Wisconsin, so I will select CST for Central Time, but please make sure you choose the proper time zone for where you are located. To confirm my selection, I will once again press and release the settings button. Setting 4 is pretty straightforward and allows us to choose whether or not we want to follow daylight savings time. The default is on, but should you wish to turn it off, simply use either the plus or minus button to switch between the two. For me, I would like it on and will confirm this selection by pressing and releasing the settings button. Next will be the hour setting. It's about 12.45 p.m. here, so using the plus or minus buttons, I will move the hour to 12, making sure the p.m. symbol is turned on. And just for reference, the AM symbol is located here. Now that I'm at 12 p.m., I will press and release the settings button again to jump to the minutes selection. Here I will press and hold the plus button now to make the numbers climb rapidly. I will press and release the settings button once again to confirm my selection once we reach 45. This will move us to the year setting. 
It's currently 2015, so I'll confirm this with the press and release of the settings button. Next, we move to the month option. Today is August 20th, so I will move the month number to an 8. Confirm this by pressing and releasing the settings button, and then move the following date number here to the 20th. Confirming this once again with the settings button. After selecting the date, the station will bring you to the final setting, which allows you to choose if you want to view your temperatures in Fahrenheit or Celsius. I will select Fahrenheit by pressing and releasing the settings button one final time. This will bring you back to the main screen and keep all of the changes you may or may not have made. One of the coolest features about this weather station has to be the ability to completely customize two separate alarms. That's right, with each alarm you have the option to choose how and when you'd like it to go off. Want to wake up to birds chirping during your work week Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. and relaxing music at 10 a.m. just on the weekends? No problem. Set the station up to work along with your life. Now, let's show you how to do this. First, we will choose which alarm we plan to set up. Alarm 1 or Alarm 2. For demonstration purposes, I will choose Alarm 1. I will then press and hold the Alarm 1 button on the back of the station to enter the alarm setting mode. Once the hour starts flashing on the front of the screen, I can then use the plus and minus buttons to adjust the values. I will set this alarm for, say, 6.30 a.m. Once I reach the 6 a.m. hour, I will confirm my selection by pressing and releasing the Alarm 1 button. This will then bring me to the minutes adjustment. I will use the plus button here to set the minutes to 30. Holding this button will help the numbers climb faster. Once there, I'll again press and release the Alarm 1 button. This will allow us to choose the type of alarm we wish to set. By type, I mean whether we want the alarm to go off just during the week, Monday through Friday, just on weekends, Saturday and Sunday, or a single alarm that can be set for one-time use or to be used every day. These icons will change as I cycle through the different options using the plus or minus buttons. I will select the Monday through Friday alarm type to move to the final alarm setting, the sound. By default, this station comes with four sound options for your alarm. Number one is birds. Number two is relaxing music. Number three is a crescendo type alarm. And number four is your typical beeping noise. As you may have noticed, these sounds will play as you cycle through them using the plus or minus buttons. I will select number 4 here by pressing and releasing the alarm 1 button one final time. Doing so will bring me back to the live time display. One thing I forgot to mention was that if no buttons are pushed for about 20 seconds, this station will actually return to the live time display automatically. So, now that we have our Alarm 1 settings in order, we need to activate it for it to actually go off. To activate this alarm, you must have the Alarm 1 switch in the up or on position. A white dot and icon will appear when active. Each of these alarms use a crescendo feature, which allows them to start in low volume and increase to maximum volume within 5 minutes. All of these settings, options, and features will work the same way for Alarm 2. Just make sure to have the AC power adapter connected and the correct time alarm activated for the times you need. But that's not all this weather station can do. It also comes with a snooze feature. When the alarm is going off, press and release the snooze slash backlight button on the top to trigger the snooze feature for 10 minutes. The alarm icon will flash on screen when in snooze mode. This can be repeated if necessary. Now, if you wish to stop the alarm or exit the snooze mode, press and release any other button besides the snooze slash backlight button. You should notice the alarm icon stop flashing and remain solid on screen. This means it is activated for the next time it is set to go off. The first thing most people will notice about your weather station is its color changing rim light. When plugged in to the AC adapter, the light on the bottom of the unit can be programmed to change color based on the weather forecast, user selection of one color, or set to a loop of all seven colors. In this chapter, we will show you how to program this setting, along with what each of the different colors mean when set to change via the forecast. Starting off here, you will notice a rim light 
high, low, off button on the back of the unit. By just pressing and releasing this button, you can adjust the brightness of the rim light. It can be set to high, low, or off. Now, to program how you would like the rim light to function, you will need to press and hold the rim light button until the word light appears on screen. Use the plus and minus buttons on the front of the unit to scroll through the rim light options. Mode 1 is forecast. If set to this mode, the light will automatically change with the forecast. A yellow light means sunny, a green light means partly sunny, a purple light means cloudy, a dark blue light means rainy, a red light means thunderstorms, and a white light stands for snow. Mode 2 is the manual loop setting. In this mode, the rim light will cycle through all seven colors and change every five seconds. And mode 3 is the manual color setting, which will allow you to choose one color to be constantly set as your rim light. To select a rim light mode, simply press and release the rim light button once again. I will choose mode 3 here. Doing so will actually bring us to another menu, where we are able to choose the color we would like our constant rim light to be. Using the plus button to cycle through, color 1 is red, color 2 is yellow, color 3 is green, Color 4 is cyan, color 5 is blue, color 6 is purple, and color 7 is white. I will select green here by moving this back to number 3, and I will confirm this as my selection by pressing and releasing the rim light button one final time. This station is equipped with some very useful weather icons that will help keep you up to date on your ever-changing outdoor conditions. These forecast icons use changing atmospheric pressure to predict weather conditions for the next 12 hours. Here's a look at the icons that will appear for the different conditions you may experience. A sunny forecast, partly cloudy, cloudy, rainy, thunderstorms, and if the outdoor temperature is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit and the forecast is set to be rainy or thunderstorms, the snowy icon will appear. This station comes with an intelligent weather forecast system built right in. This means the more you use it, the more it learns, which is why we recommend allowing about 7 to 10 days to find the correct barometric calibration. This will ensure an accurate personal forecast for your location. Some other weather features it includes are the forecast tendency indicators and the daily high and low temperature and humidity readings. These tendency indicators represent your future forecast. An up arrow means the pressure is rising and the weather is expected to improve. A down arrow stands for the opposite, where the pressure is falling and the weather is expected to worsen. And a forward pointing arrow stands for steady pressure, where the weather is expected to remain the same. To view your high and low temperature and humidity values for both indoor and outdoor conditions, simply press and release the settings or high-low button on the back of the station. First up will be the high readings, indicated by the high icon to the upper left. If you would like to manually reset these values when in the high mode, press and hold the high-low button for 5 seconds. This will work the same way for the low mode as well. To get to the low mode and view your low values, simply press and release the high-low button again. A low icon will appear in the lower left. To get back to your current readings, either press and release the settings high-low button a third time, or wait about 20 seconds for it to switch back by itself. It should also be noted that this station will automatically reset these high and low values daily, at 12 a.m. to be exact. <laughs> Charge smartphones, cameras, or other USB devices when this weather station is operated using the provided AC adapter. Simply just connect the external USB charging cable that came with your mobile device into the USB charging port found on the back of this weather station. This is a 1 amp maximum charging port, so make sure your device falls in this or a self-regulating category before use. The charging times will vary depending on the device. I should add in here the fact that this is a power output charging port. It does not supply power to the weather station. Now to the backlight adjustment. 
If connected to the AC adapter, you have the ability to control your screen's backlight brightness. To do so, press and release the snooze slash backlight button on the top of the station. With each press, you will cycle through the options, high, low, or off. Once you find the setting you like, just leave the screen the way it is. It will remain at that level of brightness. Now, this is true if you are connected via the AC adapter. If you are running on battery power only, the screen's backlight will remain off unless the snooze slash backlight button is pushed. This will boost the screen's brightness to high for 10 seconds. It should also be noted that when searching for the atomic time signal, the backlight, rim light, and USB charging port will turn off for a short period of time to avoid causing interference. Welcome to the extras portion of your weather station setup video. In this chapter, we will show you how to restart and search for your outdoor sensor to make sure it is communicating correctly with your weather station. We will show you how to perform a manual search for the WWBB atomic time signal. We will also show you where to find your station and sensor's model numbers. And finally, we will go over some useful tips to help keep your weather station working properly. If your station screen is displaying dashes for both your outdoor temperature and humidity, there are a few things you can do to remedy the situation. Option one would be to move the sensor closer to the station and replace the batteries. If that doesn't work, option two is still pretty easy and involves pressing and releasing the TX RCC search button on the back of the station, followed by the TX button found inside the battery compartment on your outdoor sensor. You will see the sensor strength icon animating on screen. The number of bars it stops at indicates the signal strength. The higher the better. If you are still having no luck, you will have to restart your sensor. To do this, bring the sensor in the house and place it 5 feet from the weather station. Remove the batteries from the sensor as well as the batteries and AC adapter from the weather station. Press and release any button on the station 20 times. Now wait about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, insert new batteries into the sensor, as well as the batteries and AC adapter back into the weather station. Wait another 15 minutes to allow the units to sync and establish a strong connection. After this, place the sensor back outside in its shaded location. Moving along, to do a WWVB atomic time signal search, Press and hold the TX RCC button until you see the atomic time icon animating. When performing the atomic time signal search, the backlight and rim light will turn off for a short period. If you wish to stop the search, simply press and hold the TX RCC search button again until the atomic time icon disappears. If it's been a while and you have run into some issues this video hasn't covered, you will probably want to search online by the product's model number. For this unit, you can find both the model number for the station as well as its outdoor sensor printed right on the bottom. For more information and product specs, visit lacrossetechnology.com or follow one of the links in the description below. And as promised, here is a list of tips to help keep your weather station running smoothly. Do not mix old and new batteries. Do not mix alkaline, standard, lithium, or rechargeable batteries. Always purchase the correct size and grade of battery most suitable for the intended use. Replace all batteries of a set at the same time. Clean the battery contacts and also the contacts on the device prior to battery installation. Ensure the batteries are installed correctly with regard to polarity. Remove batteries from equipment that is not intended to be used for an extended period of time. Remove expired batteries promptly. Do not expose to extreme temperature, vibration, or shock. Clean with a soft, damp cloth and do not use solvents or scouring agents. Replace the batteries every 12 months. This product is not a toy. Keep out of reach of children. This product is not to be used for medical purposes or for public information. It is intended for home use only. And finally, if this product does not appear to be working properly, change the batteries.
So, for the most part, I think we covered everything. But if you think we missed something, or if you should have further questions about this product or others, please do not hesitate to ask in the comment section below. That is what these videos and our social media channels are all about getting you the information you need to know quickly and accurately. We are here to help you. So, please follow us here on YouTube for the latest video content, like us here on Facebook for some personalized interaction, and follow us here on Twitter to join the conversation. In the meantime, we hope you enjoy your new weather station. I'm Greg Peasel, here for Lacrosse Technologies Tech Talk. We'll see you next time.